Major weather research programs are now decided on a European level. This was the case this year with a critically important project called Aeolis, which will study wind, a key parameter for weather forecasting in a way that has never been done before. In Toulouse, scientists have designed a satellite that is capable of measuring wind in the different layers of the atmosphere all around the Earth. Its mission is an audacious one. Aeolus is going to use a very high-energy ultraviolet laser that has never been used before in space. Agencies like NASA have already tried to develop similar systems without success. We are going to use the fundamental properties of the laser. Primarily, we'll be using the laser's emission frequency. When the beam strikes particles in the wind, these particles will send back data that we can use so we can work out how fast they're traveling, which will give us a good idea of wind speed. The only problem is that when you put an optical instrument on a rocket, during takeoff, the rocket vibrates and shakes. The impact is like a massive earthquake, and the equipment has to survive that shock. If it shifts by a single centimeter during takeoff, all our measurements will be out. And then there's a second challenge. The sun heats up the sides of the satellite, and there's outer space on the other side, which is at minus 270 degrees. So the sun is roasting one side, and it's minus 270 on the other, and the optical instrument needs to be stabilized at 20 degrees to an accuracy of a few tenths of a degree. The final problem to resolve is the space radiation that will attack the equipment's lenses. The scientists have had to develop special treatments to protect the laser's lenses against radiation damage. This project has involved years of testing. In total, it required 15 years of work before the satellite was finally ready to launch. August 22, 2018, in Darmstadt, Germany. This is a key moment. All space and weather agencies are focused on Kourou, where the launcher is due to take off, and on Darmstadt, from where the satellite will be controlled when it enters orbit. This is an extremely important moment because any launch can fail, and that would be 20 years of our lives up in smoke. Or it could be a great success, and then it's like a baby being born. It'll be over, we'll have cut the cord, and it'll grow up with us scientists, and that's when we'll see if the mission will bring everything we hope for. Top, allumage P80 et décollage VV12 Aeolus. 
Aeolus give us a sign of life. A few minutes after leaving the Earth's surface, the satellite should now be able to communicate with the people that launched it. Yes, it's communicating. There's a signal. And a second one. It works. It cried. We can see two peaks. And those are the first cries of our baby. They look happy. They look very happy. Soon, observation satellites and ground stations will be transmitting billions of pieces of data every second. The future of weather forecasting is being built in this exponential growth of new equipment, observations, and information. It is thanks to information technology that this race is being won. And yet today, the technical constraints imposed by the laws of physics still seem insurmountable to scientists. Since our strategic goal is to run five kilometer global ensembles in 2025, this translates uh, to an inflation of our computing requirements by at least a factor of 100. So our current system is able to run eight petaflops. This is eight, eight times 10 to the power of 15 uh, floating point operations per second. This is a very large number. But if you multiply this by 100, which would be the requirement that we would have to fulfill in 2025, this is basically unaffordable in terms of computing technology that you would have to, would have to buy and the electric power to supply it. We really need to invest in different types of thinking. The future of weather forecasting will involve a technical and scientific evolution, the effects of which we are as yet unable to measure fully. Will forecasters one day manage to totally model our Earth system with its winds, clouds, waves, and currents? Will they soon be able to predict the weather with a resolution of one kilometer over 200 levels of atmosphere, 10 days in advance as they hope? Thanks to their research, the satellites of the future and all the equipment yet to come, meteorologists are on the brink of radically transforming our lives on a daily basis.